With the recent release of Pokemon Sword and Shield, Game Freak and the Pokemon franchise as a whole have been at the forefront of a lot of... conversation. And listen, I could go on for hours about why this game is practically unplayable because, I mean, if I can't even use my Paramount 6 mil tank strategy, then th what's the point? But that's not what you're here to see. You're here to see how much effort a full-grown man is willing to put into fighting a helpless fish, which I can guarantee you is probably a lot more effort than you would think. But before we get into what will undoubtedly be a very one-sided cage match, let's evaluate our competitors and see what we're working with here. Magikarp is known across the Pokeverse as being an underpowered and pathetic Pokemon. It's virtually useless and it's famous for being very unreliable in battle. In short, it's the most weak and pathetic Pokemon in the world. But don't take my word for it, I'm just reading off of actual Pokedex entries from the actual games. You get the point. This Pokemon is inadequate at best and at worst, God's greatest mistake. But just what makes it so unbelievably awful, you might be asking yourself? Well, I'm glad you asked. So first things first, Magikarp's base stats are just completely abysmal. I mean, if you compare this stat block to like, Eevee, which no offense to Eevee, but this Pokemon was literally designed to be as basic as possible until it evolves, and it has stats that are like two to six times better than Magikarp's. Although Magikarp does actually have Eevee beaten defense by a little bit, and by speed by a significant margin. That being said, Said, unfortunately, no amount of speed can allow you to outrun being a weak ass hoe. Okay, but with such markedly low stats, Magikarp has to have some decent moves, right? E so what? It's not like it doesn't have any moves, it can still do something, right? You idiot. So Splash literally does nothing. Like, legitimately, the move was designed to do absolutely nothing. Tackle and Flail actually do do damage, and Flail specifically actually isn't half bad because it deals more damage the lower your health is, which is pretty useful for a Magikarp. I mean, look at that thing's eyes. Even it knows any second could be its last. But all things considered, when you're living in a world where creatures can use moves like Oblivion Wing and Hyperspace Fury and Nuzzle? Moves like Splash, Tackle, and Flail kinda seem like a given. And to those of you who I know are gonna bring up that Magikarp can also learn Hydro Pump and Bounce, those moves are both learned through TMs, and I'm not gonna train up a Magikarp just so I can bare knuckle brawl it like some freak. That would be cruel. And more importantly, that's just making it way too complicated. I would much rather just pull one out of the Atlantic with my bare hands and then punch it so hard that it goes flying across the Atlantic. Much simpler process. So, with that said, I think you get the gist. Magikarp's title of world's most pathetic Pokemon isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Now let's take a look at yours truly and learn what kind of stats I'm working with. Should be good. Now I'm a strong boy, I live a healthy lifestyle most of the time, and my mental fortitude is comparable to that of a fourth, possibly even fifth grade super genius. In other words, I am the pinnacle of slightly above average. But that alone isn't really enough to crown a victor in this battle. If I want to know how I'm going to fare in a Pokemon battle, then first I gotta become a Pokemon myself. Well, metaphorically. What I really mean when I say that is that I'm going to use real life and in-game data to determine what my stats would be if I were a Pokemon. Which is definitely not the more exciting of the two meanings behind that statement, but with a subject matter as important as this, there's no time for dillying, nor dallying. I'm not messing around with this one. So with that in mind, if I'm gonna be a Pokemon, the first thing I'm probably gonna need to know is my level. So I could just say that there's a one-to-one -one correlation between your level as a Pokemon and your age and years, but unless you're like, Master Roshi or, I don't know, Jackie Chan? That doesn't exactly work. That being said, after a bit of research, I found that a majority of studies conducted on the aging process seem to agree that both your brain and your muscles stop developing around age 25. And while that doesn't mean that your body or your mind can't improve from that point, that's just when your body stops naturally growing. So if I had to determine where level 100 would fall, that just makes the most sense. And using that logic, that would mean considering I'm about a month out from my 21st birthday that I am well into level 83. The ever-fleeting nature of life aside, though, let's see if I can win in a foot race against a unicorn that's on fire. So in order to calculate most of my in-game stats, I decided to compare some of the otherworldly feats that Pokemon are said to have performed in the Pokédex to feats of what some would argue to be equal or greater notoriety that I can perform. So after a bit of research into some of the faster Pokemon in the game, I found that in several Pokédex entries for Rapidash, it's listed as having a top speed of 150 miles per hour. 
It's really fast. So obviously the term top speed refers to the fastest recorded speed of something. So with this in mind, let's say that a speed of 150 miles per hour is the real life equivalent to a speed stat of 339, which is Rapidash's max speed stat in the game. Knowing this, all that I then had to do was trick some of my friends into agreeing to help me calculate my speed stat. We did a couple trials, and although I tried to explain to my friends that I'm pretty sure I really am as fast as the radar gun was saying, they seemed to be under the impression that 24 miles per hour was fast even for a high-level athlete, and that my speed actually topped out at 19 miles per hour. So for the sake of appeasing them, I guess we'll go with that for my top speed. And now that we know my top speed, we can do some quick math to determine that my official speed stat in the Pokemon universe is, can we get a drum roll please? Wow, that's, uh, that's a lot sadder when that's just one guy. My official speed stat is... 43. Not bad! I mean, could be better, considering I'm, like, level 83. But it also could be much, much worse. And on that topic, let's move on to my next stat. Defense. So here's where things start to get a bit nutty. When I was looking through Pokédex entries for the sturdiest of the bubble butt Thickymons, I found that quite a few Pokédex entries boasted that Steelix is actually harder than Diamond. Now I know what you're thinking, well Ty, what's harder than Diamond? Well not much! So after reading this, I dug deep into the recesses of my brain to remember an 8th grade science lesson on a little something called the Mohs Hardness Scale. For those of you who don't know what that is, basically it's a method for testing how hard a rock is by scratching it with another rock and seeing if it leaves a mark. And right at the top of that list was, you guessed it, diamonds. Meaning that there is literally nothing harder than diamonds. Some would even go as far as to say, and those people would be right, that diamond is unbreakable. Or so I thought. As I was looking through the rankings, I found that there are actually two minerals that score a 10 on the most hardness scale. Diamond and carbonado. Yeah, is that not the most badass name for any mineral on the planet? Anyway, so I did a bit more digging and found that Carbonado, although it has the same score on the most hardness scale, it's actually more durable than standard industrial diamonds. Not only that, it also just looks exactly like the stuff that Steelix is made from. Regardless though, with that out of the way, we now have a measurable number that I can compare myself to. See, alongside the actual rating from 1 to 10, the scale also provides something called absolute hardness, which is just how many times harder a mineral is than a mineral with a hardness of 1. Because Carbonado is ranked at the top, it has an absolute hardness of 1500. Human skin, on the other hand, is ranked at a 2 on the most hardness scale, which means that it has an absolute hardness of 2. Now that we know all of this, all we have to do is compare these numbers to Steelix's defense stat of 200, and you get my defense stat, which would be 0 0.26 repeating. That's definitely not encouraging. Okay, but like, there's no way it can be this bad for everything else. Can it? So in order to measure my strength holistically, I decided to compare myself to two Pokemon. One that attacks primarily with its lower body, and one that attacks more with its upper body. Luckily for me, not only did I find two Pokemon that fit that bill perfectly, but also those two Pokemon have the same exact base attack stat of 120. First, let's talk about Blaziken. So in the Pokédex, it's mentioned several times that Blaziken is capable of easily clearing a 30-story building in one single leap. Well, I think you know where this is going. Long story short, I did the research. On average, one story for a building is about 14 feet tall, which means that your average Blaziken can leap over a building that is 420 feet tall. So once again, I bullied my friends into helping me so that I could calculate the first half of my attack stat. Now, I'm not one of those gym freaks that buys their own equipment, but I'm also not one of those everyday life freaks that's going to have his friends secretly film him in a public gym. So I had to make do with what I had around the house, namely a very wobbly shelf. No need to worry though, I prepared a single pillow in case anything went wrong. Anyway, so the shelf basically acted as a control to prove that I, white boy, do in fact have some ups. I then went into my roommate's room and grabbed as many books as I thought I couldn't jump over so that when I inevitably kicked over one of the books, we could measure the height of the remaining books and get my jump height. So I stacked up all the books and then I proceeded to actually miraculously jump over all of the books and clear the shelf again. Luckily for me, my roommate is a well-read individual and he is also off on break, which meant that I 
had plenty more books to kick over with absolutely no complaints about that potential destruction of property. I then continued stacking more and more books until I hit a maximum book capacity, leaving my final jump height at about 42 inches, or exactly three and a half feet. So finally, when I compared all of these numbers to Blaziken's attack stat of 120, that left my attack stat at, and I cannot make this up, exactly one. Science is a beautiful monster sometimes, isn't it? But anyway, like I said earlier, that's only half of the equation. I would now like to direct your attention to the absolute beefcake, emphasis on cake, that is Hariyama. So yet again, I was looking through the Pokedex entries and I found in Hariyamas that apparently it can stop a moving train with as little as one slap. Now obviously there are quite a few blanks that need to be filled in when you're just using train as your point of measurement. So in order to be able to make some guesses that were a little bit more educated, I decided to do some research on trains. Here's what I found. So there are two types of trains that you need to consider. First off, you have freight trains, which weigh anywhere from 3,000 to 18,000 tons. Then you have passenger trains, which weigh in a little bit lighter at about 1,500 to 6,000 tons. On top of this, these different types of trains have different regulations imposed upon them, meaning that depending on the type of train and the type of railroad that the train is on, it has different operating speed limits. And now that we know all of this, all we have to do is calculate the amount of force that it takes to stop a moving train in one slap. Wow, all of those seemingly arbitrary train questions from high school math classes are really starting to make sense now. So let's be real here, even if we lowball this sucker, like, as much as possible, the force required to do this is still gonna be absolutely absurd. So we're just gonna say that this is a 1500 ton passenger truck operating on a class one track going 15 miles per hour. And for those of you who think that that's a bit of a bold assumption, you'll understand in a second why these numbers are just so high that it really does not matter. All right, so before we can figure out the force, we need to know the acceleration. And acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time. So let's figure this out. For the velocity, obviously it's going from 15 miles per hour to zero. So the change is 15. As for the time, let's just say that this slap lasts in total for about half a second. When you total that up and convert it all to the right metrics, that leaves you with a total acceleration of a little over 13 meters per second squared. And finally, to calculate the force, all you have to do is multiply that acceleration by the mass of the train. So you convert the tons to kilograms, multiply the two together, and that leaves you with a whopping 18 million newtons. Now it's time for me to explain why lowballing it did little to nothing to the final result. So once again, I mercilessly berated my friends until they helped me one last time, this time using the radar gun from earlier to determine how fast I can slap. After determining my top slap speed of 25 miles per hour, I calculated the weight of my arm based on the average weight of a male arm, which is about 6% of your body weight, by the way, in case you were wondering, and used the same equations as before to calculate how much force my arm puts out when slapping, which is about 97 newtons. That's not the whole story, however, because when a human throws out a punch or a slap or whatever, most of the force doesn't even come from the arm. In actuality, your arm only accounts for like a quarter of the power. So I multiplied 97 by 4 to get a grand total of just under 300 newtons from my slap. Now if you remember from before, the amount of force required to stop a train even under the easiest of circumstances, is 18 million newtons. In short, that would leave my attack stat at about 0.00192. And because both the lower and the upper body attack stat are based off of Pokemon with the same base attack stat of 120, that means that they can be weighted equally to give me a final attack stat of about 0.5, meaning that my upper body attack stat was so close to zero, even under the best circumstances, that when it's averaged out with one, it's still gonna be 0.5. But I mean, hey, at least I'm still pretty fast, right? Unfortunately, no amount of speed can allow you to outrun being a weak ass hub. I'm really eating my own words here, aren't I? Well, since Magikarp can't learn any special attacks on its own, and since the closest thing that I have to any special attack is attacking people's sense of reality when they find out that somebody really can be that stupid, there's really no need to calculate special attack and defense, so the only thing that's left to do is calculate my health. And let me tell you, you thought those stats were bad. Get ready to get full on clinically depressed with this one because it is not good. So in Pokemon, when you're reduced to zero HP, you're rendered unconscious, which means that all that I had to do was calculate how much force it takes to knock me out and then compare that to the amount of force that a Pokemon can put out when attacking somebody. Now I've already had several concussions and I'm not looking to make my skull into a bouncy castle again, even in the name of science. So instead I looked up the average amount of force it takes to knock a person out and found that it can take as little as four Newtons. In order to find the force that a Pokemon can put out with a single attack, I've referred back to our buddy 
Hariyama, who, again, can create 18 million newtons of force with a single slap. So I sifted through Hariyama's learn set to find a move that sounded like the right one, found a move called Force Palm, here's a picture of it, even the little graphic shows a hand slapping something, so I think we found the culprit here. Now fortunately, if you look online, you can find the exact equation that they use in the Pokemon games to calculate damage, which meant that all that I had to do was plug the numbers in and compare the amount of damage that it would have done in the Pokemon games to the unbelievable overkill that is slapping somebody with 18 million newtons of force when it only took four to take him out of commission. So as I established earlier, this Hariyama has an attack stat of 120. I also took the liberty of calculating the average level of every single Hariyama that you encounter in every single one of the games that it's in to ensure that the level was as accurately representative of an average Hariyama as possible. The result was an average of 49.5, so we'll round that up to 50. Also, a couple factors to consider here before we get our final result. This move gets an additional 1.5 times damage thanks to something called its stab, or same type attack bonus. Basically, that means that a fighting type Pokemon is using a fighting type move, so it should deal more damage. Also, I would say that it's safe to assume that I am a normal type Pokemon, because the only other type of Pokemon that I could reasonably be is a fighting type Pokemon, and the closest thing to formal combat training that I've had is the absolutely staggering amounts of anime fight scenes that I have watched and unsuccessfully tried to replicate. So with that being said, normal type Pokemon are weak to fighting type Pokemon, which means that that move is super effective against me, and it deals two times more damage. So finally, when you total it all up, that move deals about 120,000 damage to me, which you might think is pretty high. And it is, but what's somehow even more astounding about that is that with all of that in mind, when you compare that damage to the astounding amount of overkill that Hariyama is hitting me with when he hits me about 18 million newtons too hard, that leaves me with an HP stat of, get this, 0 .006. Underpowered and pathetic Pokemon. Virtually useless, famous for being very unreliable in battle. It's the most weak and pathetic Pokemon in the world. Wait, but that means... Turns out, not only would a Magikarp be able to pretty handily beat me, but to make matters worse, even if I went out and challenged a level 1 Magikarp that knew Tackle, it would be able to one-shot me about 11,000 times over. That's not even an exaggeration. I did the math there. And I know some of you guys are probably looking at my stats and thinking, I don't know, man. Something seems fishy here. But you also have to understand that I'm comparing myself to creatures that can literally destroy cities, manipulate the world around them with their minds, and alter time and space at their whim. So if a magic orb can, even with a lot of struggling, keep up with those kinds of creatures, maybe we've just been underestimating magic orbs this whole time. I mean, think about it. There are people who have done elite four sweeps with a six magic orb team. I mean, the magic orbs were higher level, but like, they're going up against Pokemon that can do stupid stuff. And they're they're winning! So, I guess you guys can just consider this myth busted. Yeah, that's that's really it. That's all I got. Uh, don't underestimate Magikarp. I guess that's the moral of the story. Uh, bye.